This is a story from CNBC regarding the Olympics Organization Committee coming under fire for being very aggressive with companies um, using Olympic hashtags in their own promotions. Generally, trademarks are protected by the Lanham Act, and for the most part, this controls trademarks throughout the U.S., but did you know that there are special trademark laws outside of the Lanham Act? Did you know that the Olympic Committee has its own special trademark? Under um, Section 36, uh, subsection 220506 of the U.S. Code, the Olympic Committee is given the exclusive right to names, seals, emblems, and badges having to do with the Olympics. This is also called the Ted Stevenson's Olympic and Amateur Sports Act. And as you see here in the language of exclusivity that I've uh, kind of highlighted, um, this gives the corporation, that's the Olympics, the exclusive right to use um, names such as Olympics, Olympiad, et cetera, that have to do with the Olympics. And we're going to highlight that here in subsection 4 of this particular section. The Ted Stevenson's Amateur and Olympic Sports Act was passed in 1978, and amended again in 1998. This gives the Olympics Committee the exclusive right to those words that we discussed in the previous section. And here's another list that's off the Olympic Committee's websites of words that companies are in phrases that the companies are not able to use. Here's another list of words. So basically what they'll do is um, start uh, trademarking the city and word combinations for each one of the Olympics. And um, as you see here, here's another list of those wor particular words for both past Olympics and future Olympics. And you'll notice also that as you go back a few decades, the trademarks of the city and year combinations for both the Summer and Winter Olympics, as they begin to get older and they're no longer needed, the Olympic Committee will abandon them. So the Olympics in Rio has just ended. And let's look at how the Olympic organization protected their trademarks for this last and past Olympics. Um, this particular story, as I said, involves the Olympic Committee being under fire for being very aggressive with companies when protecting um, their trademarks, and specifically what these companies were using in their hashtags on social media. So because we're in the modern age of social media, this is a very important thing. Now, if you're a regular person who is hashtagging the Olympics on your Instagram feed or your Facebook feed or your Snapchat feed or your Twitter feed or your Pinterest feed or whatever the case may be, it's possible that you could get a letter from the Olympics telling you that you're infringing on their trademark and to take the post down. But it's not likely because the Olympic Committee is not so much interested in individuals because that's not their big concern. What they're concerned about is businesses. Because businesses have to pay for the privilege of an Olympic hashtag and big companies um, that pay for this privilege to be sponsors of the Olympics pay big bucks for this, they are the ones that the Olympic Committee are trying to control. So when you see Coca-Cola or other companies using these hashtags, know that they've paid a great amount of money and this is a, a source of revenue for the Olympic Committee. I understand that the Olympic Committee is serious about protecting these hashtags. Um, so we're going to talk about a, a company, knitting company, that they went after named Ravelry. They make knitting patterns and sell yarn and, and such notions and stuff like that for knitters. It's one of my favorite companies. Yes, I am a knitter. They went after them for using the word Ravolympics in a contest that they were having to knit an afghan. However, after an uproar from knitters, the Olympic Committee backed down and apologized. Yes, those knitters are a rowdy bunch. Um, this story about the Olympic Committee being very aggressive with their social media protection has been picked up by other news outlets other than CNBC. There's a news story also from, CB from the, B sorry, the BBC's website about a similar story about how the Olympic Committee was aggressively targeting a small business that was using um, the Olympics protected per, uh, property without paying for the privilege. Sally Bergen, who runs a clothing company named Olsenow, said that the company got in trouble with the U.S. Olympic Committee after posting a picture of one of the runners that they sponsored after she had just qualified for the Olympics. 
Okay, so can you see the Olympics any at all in this picture? This is the picture that they had a problem with, and it's very, very small, but they went after her for it. Even during the Olympics, athletes and coaches and participants are prevented from posting anything from non-Olympic sponsors during the Olympics. Um, this is under the Olympic Charter, specifically Rule 40, as it's commonly known, um, that uh, prevents them from doing so. And here's some information that is given to coaches, participants, athletes, that they are prevented from doing this nine days before the opening ceremony and three days after the closing ceremony, at least for the, the current Olympics, and it's the same for all past and future Olympics. And um, the IOC gives its reasoning that Rule 40 is in place to protect the unique nature of the Olympic Games by preventing over-commercialization. But also notice that right here it's to pr also pr to preserve Sources of funding, as 90% of the revenues generated for the IOC, of course, are distributed worldwide for the sporting movement. So we see that the Olympics, although it's a little commercialized, also, you know, serves a greater good because the, having the Olympics is a good thing, and they're able to generate revenues from the protection of their trademarks.